Did something stupid. <laughs> no need to worry. <laughs> Even over the internet. I know, man. The force is getting stronger with me. Look out. <laughs> I can't even guarantee people get their IQ points back now. <laughs> Before, yeah, it's a light influence, but uh, the force is growing stronger with me lately. Speaking of the Force, Eddie, did you ever watch uh, Star Wars Clone Wars TV show? Yeah, the animated series, yeah. You watched the whole thing? Yeah, that was fun. Did you I like that one. Actually. Did you watch Rebels? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, wow. You doing your uh, own work. I didn't like the animated series at first. I'm like, this is so gay. I'm like, fuck this shit. And I was like, alright. Like, put it on. And there were some really cool, like, episodes. I'm like, okay. Maybe I'll just keep giving this a shot and watch the whole thing through. The Clone Wars is it's hardcore. Yeah. It's violent. <laughs> yes, and I loved that. And I was like, all right, yeah. there was some fucked up shit that happened. It. And then Rebels came out. I was like, all right, it started out with the kid. And I'm like, all right, well, give this a shot with his derpy lightsaber, dude. And it, it took a minute, but it was all right. It caught on pretty cool. And then, yeah. Yeah, it helped with the Ahsoka series too, because I understand yeah. the fuck the war. Because it, it took me a minute to remember. I'm like, wait, who the fuck are all these? Oh wait, yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. What's up, Jake? What's up, man? What's up? So guys, sorry I'm late. I... Oh, you're good, man. Glad to have you on the session, man. We need reinforcements. <laughs> I heard you guys killed some chimeras. Yeah, a couple yeah. of them. Nice. Almost got yeah. rolled right off the bat, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost missed a TPK. Oh, that was <laughs> cool. And then somehow we flipped uh, it on its head. We won. Nice. Kind of. We have one. Oh well, yeah, still might die. Yeah, still very well. Might die. Yeah, it started off looking a little bad, but then. I got dunked on. We rallied. Yeah. We rallied like a And then again, rallied. fucking Sundora saved our fucking ass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no. It's only players that are not here. <laughs> I fucking told you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That is fan fucking fantastic. <laughs> the stage has been set. <laughs> yeah, everybody be nice or you get thrown off the fucking ship. <laughs> it's all just, um like a prequel to a battle royale where everyone dies by killing each other. <laughs> or, like our last game. We, we will avoid a TPK by friendly fire this time. Uh, sorry, that's what I'm about to fuck with you guys to be creepy and dice at the same time. So Hasn't that been the last two campaigns? No. Because the last campaign, Cassandra left. To be fair, yeah. it's been a component of every campaign I've ever run, which when I say that out loud makes it seem like maybe I'm the problem. Because <laughs> <laughs> then also... I don't think it's you guys. Well... It's just, we're presented with powerful options, and then we always choose the worst option. And we don't have Shane around anymore, so... <laughs> I mean, it happened with Shane there, too. Yeah. He just didn't. Yeah, yeah Max Danger got right. murdered, and Shane didn't do shit about it. I mean, Shane fucked Doc well, up pretty bad. I wasn't there for that. Not in thing. time. Not in I time. Not that session. That's not fair, man. Shane has saved your ass. <laughs> yeah. 
I think I got one I, shot. This is the problem. I talked to a guy who makes I think you uh, got eight foam. shot with an action surge. Yeah. <laughs> I so talked to I, a guy who makes foam uh, like LARPing weapons. And he does them with like really professionally well done. And I told him, I was like, yeah, like he was a big D&D &D nerd. He was at Ford the other night. And I was like, I had this dude, Shane, and he used a fucking like stop sign with like the cement attached. And he's like, dude, that's the coolest weapon ever. I'm like, <laughs> it was. He goes, if I make that, will you buy it off me? I'm like, fuck yeah, I will. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, okay. We were sitting there drawing out designs for it. So I might have Shane's club here eventually. <laughs> I'll put it right with his poster. <laughs> you got entrepreneur. Hey, this is Nerd City out here, man. You got entrepreneur. I know guys. I know guys who do full suits of the dwarven armor in that uh, that foam shit. If I can get a full suit of dwarven armor, I'll just be really tall. Fuck Minnesota. Falling, falling prey <laughs> to the the claws of capitalism. I'll just say it. <laughs> Okay, you guys gang up on me. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you Midwestern piece of shit. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>, Californians. <laughs> All right. Um. So, last session we left off, you guys started working for the Gilded Blade. You uh, took a job after. Um, a discussion with the very gruff gentleman who runs the um, the creature company, um, which is a monster hunting guild, uh, that you were going to do what seemed like a simple job, a couple chimeras that were causing some problems and killing hunters, um, which again seemed odd because that would be a pretty generic job for this group. Um, upon some uh, Cinderella singing to some animals and gaining some information, you discovered that um, there was more going on than just the chimeras. There was talk of a druid who had seemingly been controlling them. <clears throat> so with that in mind, and after a tarot card reading by Alara telling you to travel at night, um, you abandon your previous plans based on that and just set off ahead. Um, with most of your party uh, not grabbing Kazakh or Japheth, just going out into the middle of the night, um, traversing up to the snow-capped mountain, you found the um, two Chimera, and with some pre-planning between Samugi and Sandara, a trap was made, um, a clockwork trap that... Um, initially um, uh, completely restrained one of the beasts and at kind of a turning point in the fight Sandara quickly blinked next to one and basically threw the trap on it and activated it instantaneously through her use of meta magic. Um, so where we are now it was awesome. uh, your group left with just the druid who was uh, wild shaped as a swarm of insects uh, that was, uh, you know, trying to control the battlefield. Um, it's at this point that right as she exits this form, um, Cassius was waiting with a held spell, um, and as he casts it, uh, she's standing right behind the stack, completely paralyzed and held in place. Oh, cool. So, uh, what are you guys all doing? I Can would, we um, make her unconscious? Yeah. Without without killing her? Yeah. I'd like to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll... Go ahead and roll your attack. At advantage? It, it's at advantage. And you can do great weapon mass. Like, this is non-lethal damage. It's not like... You're gonna actually snap her neck yeah, and just roll we're not, we're not playing Pokemon here. Like, Might cut her head off. <laughs> 18? <laughs> yeah, that definitely hits. Okay. 
I'm not playing Pokemon. I'm in the wrong room. And you get and then, two attacks, by the way. Oh, cool. I'll roll both of them. Twenty-four. Both hit. Eight points and sixteen points. <laughs> and are these great weapon masters? No, those are standard. Okay. Um. So with that, um, as she's held, um, you see her fighting against the spell. So every once in a while, she's just kind of moving and, um, but she's just incapacitated. Um. With that, uh, he watches the stack, just kind of takes the butt of his, or the, like, the um, uh, shaft of his hammer, and is like trying to just clock her in the head, and it, it kind of looks like a, uh, um, like a janitor having a fight with a raccoon <laughs> using like a broomstick. So he's just kind of sitting here like whacking this uh, kind of disheveled looking druid who, if it weren't for the situation, would look very terrifying because she's got a lot of, like, um, just kind of poorly chosen and placed, uh, like, facial tattoos that almost completely cover up her natural skin. She just doesn't look like the kind of person you see out and about. Um, okay, so while the stack is uh, beating up the druid, is there anything else anyone is doing? Can I run over to her? Because I know I'm like 20 feet away. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I will <laughs> say at this point, um, Kazakh, um, after getting lost in the snow, following your group after they left you behind while you were tying up the boat, asking around, discovering they were going first to the Jaded Jackal, um, you found a very unhelpful gentleman there who, after very few words but a lot of time told you that they then were kind of poking around at the creature company at which point you found out that they were apparently headed back to the ship at which point Leland informed you that they in fact went to the snow-capped mountains uh, changing their plan of what they discussed out loud at the creature company um, and decided to go in the middle of the night on a whim so um, after getting lost in um, the snow, being not someone that's very comfortable with the outdoors, you finally found a set of tracks. Um, and more specifically, you heard the sounds of uh, battle between presumably your group and some chimeras. So, um, as you slide down the snowy embankment, ready for action, you shoot up, covered in snow, um, with whatever spell at hand you were ready to use, uh, you just see two carcasses of the chimeras, and you see the sight of the stack just beating the Christ out of something. <laughs> you, I swear to God, you'd see Alara just running like, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> yeah. Across you you seem to have stumbled upon a domestic dispute right now, because <laughs> you now see the cleric is pulling your fighter um, off of an incapacitated uh, person who you don't know. Like, there's... You were told they were here to hunt Chimera. Chimera are dead, and now there's this situation going on. So that's what's going on. Um, so, Alara, as you attempt to uh, uh, pull the stack off of the druid... First off, Kazakh, what, what are your thoughts and what are you doing? Uh, yeah, Kazakh kind of just uh, lets the snow settle around him and watches the beating happen for a few seconds before... Uh, turning to the person he happens to be closest to, and it's just kind of like, is uh, is everything all right? Or yeah, so out here? as everyone is just screaming or like, I would say um, there's just some. Samu- You're not really close to anyone. Uh, Samugi would probably be the closest one, and you see him just kind of curiously looking at you, just like, oh, like you're you're here now. <laughs> Should uh, someone stop him, or are we just gonna kind of let this? Uh, should we let him do his thing and then, you know, bury the body in the snow? Is that what we're going towards? So, Alara, what are you doing right now? Uh, I would be trying to interpose myself between the stack and the uh, frozen in place uh, witch, uh, 
at which point trying to cast Spare the Dying on him to make sure she doesn't die. <laughs> okay. Because um, as far as I'm good, I know, the stack is trying to kill her. Yes, you're going light on her, but like... <laughs> I mean, he's using the friendly end of the hammer. <laughs> but still, like, this is a witch, man. He's, okay, he's using the end of the hammer to be used for rodents, not for murder. So. <laughs> Okay, okay. I, I, um, I think cast. you hit her enough. Maybe tie her up now. Yeah, I'll say cast your hold on the druid is maintained for now. Okay. Can I restrain her then? Uh, sure. Do you have something I, to restrain her with? I got a spell for that. We need that quick. I also have rope. Oh, we can do rope. That's the key. I like it. So you, you, so this, Varric, you're uh, kind of like fumbling around. You've got like a bottle that actually has a little bit of liquid in it that you thought was empty, but you were saving it to refill it later. Um, and Sundara walks up with rope. Oh, thank you. And then I would like to restrain. Okay. I'm so um, sorry. Just for the hell of it, give me a... I'm going to say this is going to be a dexterity check. You can add double your proficiency modifier, and you can take it at advantage. How oh, cool. Trust her up like a chicken. Like a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, is, can someone fill me in? Why, was, uh, why were you guys uh, eating on this... Seemingly defenseless woman. I'm not judging. Twenty-one. Okay. Well, a bear. A bear yeah, told me. so slimy and so funny. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, uh, sarcastic. Uh, well, she was controlling the beast, and we contained them. And uh, surprisingly, uh, like you'd see, like, like some of. Uh, a few of us, at least, our clothes are probably pretty scorched. Oh, um, some of us are effed up, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that was my second question. And, and then I thought she was a pile of moss, and then and then she wasn't. So I didn't know this was who the druid was. Um, can I can I walk up to funny? the wizard and uh, uh, just like rip off part of his sleeve? What? Oh, oh, God. What a bit. And then gag the... The, um... The druid? The druid. Call. So her right. hands are bound and she's gagged. Okay. Yep. You didn't uh, have to attack the poor man's clothes. Glad I didn't wear my good robe. I, I will... Yeah. So... I can go ahead and... I mean, Kazakh, are you just letting him do this? Or... Yeah, no. It's not... You know, it's just yeah, a rep. So, the stack, you're I, I, want, I want to contribute in any way possible. You're, I mean, if you were anyone else, you might feel a little embarrassed that you're showing up to these jobs not prepared, and Sundara had to bail you out with rope. Um, but you, in a moment of improvisation, you turn, you see Kazakh. He's mumbling about something or other. You can't really hear. Uh, you walk up to him and grab his sleeve, and as he continues to talk, maybe in protest, maybe ignoring you, <laughs> um, you completely rip off his whole sleeve. Um, and also it tears a little bit kind of down the side of like, oh. so he's, he's, he's now almost got a bit of like a toga situation going on. Jesus, Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, um, Jesus. And also, <laughs> yeah. up, um, there was also a bit of like a wedgie situation as just the way the stitching of the robe worked. Um, oh, God. Yeah. So, but you've got more than enough cloth. You've got like a towel oh. of cloth. I, I have to know that I haven't showered every time you leave me the, the, the sure. ship. Enjoy <laughs> that. Druid, and there's just like long tails of cloth that uh, are not being used. I will say despite that part being extremely um, uh, we'll call it what it is, just crude. Um, I would say, who would you notice this? Um, Sundara, I would say you and Cass 
Actually, Andalar, all, all the casters, you all would right. specifically notice, first off, this is a man who knows his way around some ropes. Um, you immediately get the sense this was either a sailor or a dock worker or something like that. Um, just because of the speed and dexterity that he ties these knots is just a little impressive. Wait, who, do, who does this again? What? The stack. Oh, the stack. However, I, I okay. for the thing that's even more impressive and maybe a little disconcerting is the specific way that he um, applied these binds was very precise and with a specific intentions. You specifically notice that he runs a line of rope between each of the web spaces of the fingers so that she can't close her hand to make a fist. Oh, cool. So somatic, so somatic, so, so, casting inhibition, that's that. So it's not something you would have expected from your fighter and you get the sense. Might not have been the first time he's done something like this. Kazakh mentioned Whoa. that this doesn't look like the, this is the first time you've uh, found a helpless woman with some rope. <laughs> well, she wasn't helpless, but I've dealt with magic users before. That's very yeah. Not uh, yeah. At, at this point, uh, at this point, uh, Kazakh, I'd be taking your arm and like. I bring a, 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 a like a brush out, a paintbrush, and paint something on your arm. If you'll let me, I will I will fix your 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 robes. And oh. um, paint yeah, no, paint a grease down your arm, and then uh, sprinkle oh. some sand on it and cast mending oh, that's as cool. your robes are rebuilt. <laughs> oh oh how folksy! That's that's quite that's a, that's an interesting it, way. It looked like, oh. It looked like a nice robe. I, I... <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. It's, you know, back in the uh, the tower, we didn't really use you know, the earthy kind of stuff. You know, we kind of we, we moved past that a few grades. <laughs> you know, it's more of a middle school thing. But I appreciate the uh, the effort. I like you know you know it's good. Cool, cool. I've um, come across situations where my clothes are torn, and I've always kept that one in my back pocket just in case. It's. It's, you're not totally mended because the cloth from your robe is still being used as a gag, but it's now less toga, <laughs> and now you look like some kind of Street Fighter character because you just got like one sleeve completely gone and the other one is just a like, robe sleeve. So nice. it's better. <laughs> I like that. I'm, not, I'm down for that. You're still in the snow like in a robe. Yeah. I'm going to go build a fire. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're going to get frostbite. <laughs> I'm just going to gather yeah, my a little, little bit hard. of wood. So uh, what are we going to do with the... Do we just turn this druid in? Do we chop off her head? Do we... Like, what are we doing here? I was assuming we turn her over to the authorities. All right. I, who's... Okay, second question. Uh, I kind of threw out my back a little. I'm going to hike it up here. So I don't really want to carry her. Uh, I was we, planning we, on carrying her. Okay, good, good. Or we could do the head thing. I think the head's, you know, it's pretty light. Very mobile. We might need to talk to her. Uh, we don't oh, really... Yes. Okay. Um, okay, I was just checking. Magic or summoning like this, this is not a, uh, a common practice. These beasts uh -huh. are not your average thing you come across. So, in my mind, I would think either she summoned them, which is very difficult to hold two of them, summon two of them and then train them or she may know where to find more of them or is she's there... working with someone more powerful was if there you... was there any marks of like control on the beast did they have like roots on them or leashes or brands or... Go ahead and, uh, as you're going to investigate um, you notice something immediately um, there appear to be areas where what looks like some kind of stone or like fragments of bone have been embedded into the skulls of these creatures in like, a, in like four spots um, on the uh, 
As you also look at the druid, you notice that she has a very similar um, kind of circular area of like embedded material with surrounding scar tissue around. It looks old. Uh, is this this uh these like this these crown of bones kind of thing? Um, is that like a common ritual that a magic user would be familiar with, or? Uh, it's not one that you're immediately... It's not like something where you're like, oh, it's this spell. Like, I'd say off the bat, without having you roll, you know that this is primal magic that's not going to be something in your wheelhouse. But go ahead and give me an arcana check. What about the sorcerers? Maybe they're a little more... Uh, in tune with the primal stuff? What does that mean? My magic not as refined as your magic? <laughs> No, I mean, I yeah, I'm, not, I'm just, you know, my magic might just be a little bit more, you know, refined. What's oh. fired? <laughs> uh, the druid can't talk right now. Um, oh. Cat, were you holding on to your spell? Uh, nope, I dropped it and I've been collecting firewood. Okay. Um, as you see, even her, uh, she's kind of like not responded to anything going on. She's kind of just been like head down. But you watch as. Kaz, Kazakh continues, there is a visible eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you want me to roll Arcana, Alex? Yes. Um, I got, god fucking damn it, uh, I got a, all together 13. This is some fucking weird druid shit, man. Uh, I, okay, I try to dress that up. Um, this seems to be a very uh, esoteric uh, ritual being performed by nature-based uh, magic users uh, that is very uh, esoteric and uh, nature-based. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kazik. That was very yeah, helpful. I, I haven't seen wounds like this before, but thank you for that. Um, Can I search her, like her pockets and see what else she has on her. Yeah. Oh, we're robbing the we're robbing her. <laughs> I like this group. I, I, this is a good group. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check. With advantage, because she is restrained. <laughs> That's a ten. Ten. Okay. Um... So she is in kind of a scattered array of, like, fur, there's bones, like, tied together with what looks like animal sinew. Um, you kind of get to a point, and some of these bones and teeth still have, like, animal pieces on them. So, in a way, she's just like a very dry and sharp poop. Um, and pretty quickly, you're not used to handling things like this, and you're like, I feel like I need some kind of protective gear to be working this person. Um, so you kind of get to a point where it's like, there's nothing on her that seems like it's not just part of the entire matted down, like, situation that has almost, like, mended into her flesh. Um, you, you notice a couple things. Um, first off, uh, around her neck, there is what looks like a little rat skull, um, that has what looks like some, like, desiccated eyeballs of a different creature that have been, like, jammed into the eye holes and into the mouth. Um, that is kind of on, like, a wooden, uh, necklace of sorts and you kind of get the sense that this is some kind of some kind of charm um like a like a religious charm like to a certain god or goddess or demon or whatever you you wouldn't be able to tell if it, this this just seems like it's like a, a magical trinket of sorts um hey, there's no there's no clear like I mean, you're not really looking for that. You're just, like, doing an investigation check. That's what you notice. You also notice 
the facial tattoos on her face look like a set of just twisted vines that are going like in her nose, in her mouth, and it looks like the ink itself has been tattooed on the inner surfaces of those areas too. It's so like Jake, were you watch as one of them is like curling around the eyelids and looks like these thorny vines are reaching into her eye. The tattoo. I was just wondering, Jake, were oh, you sorry. here for the the like describing the necklaces with charms and stuff? Uh, session? No, because it's not like. Okay, there's. If it's okay to fill them in, yeah. On that, um, we came across. Uh, these necklaces that can hold charms that allow you to have like certain spell bonuses. Oh, so that. Yeah. Right? Okay. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Or like other attack bonuses. Or... Yeah. 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 Exactly. They give you like attack bonuses. Minis. They can hold a certain number of them. So that's oh, like a yeah. thing in this, this world. So yeah, just to fill you in, if that's not metagaming, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. That's just a yeah. Reason. So. Yeah. Yeah, Kazakh, that would be something you'd be familiar with. Um, charms are a... It's, it's well within the armamentarium of most wizards that are worth their salt. Um, they're basically just like little magical trinkets, and then people can use talismans to basically stack multiple magical items within a single attunement slot. Okay. Um, Value... But that's that's all you notice off of her. Did I? Would it be okay to remove that from her? Can we not like yank it off or anything? Are, are you that knowing that that could be knowing that that could be like a potential like boost or weapon of I'm some sort to her. I like remove it from her and put it in my bag. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna complain. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, I'll say Sundara was the one who was searching her, so you would be the one. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, go ahead, mm. my bad. So, it's what? What do you want to do with this information? Yeah, right. I pull it off and take her to the group, and I'm like, this, this seems magical. So she's got a rock in her. I mean, yes, yes. she seems like a magical person. Yeah, the trinket looks valuable. You should keep it. The, the tattoos yeah, are quite valuable. Makes me. Very doubtful of her character. But there's a rock in her forehead. Yeah. Oh, I've there's a rock. There are, that, that there are four rocks in her forehead. The oh, four the rocks? Uh, it would be four on each side. Wow. Jesus Christ. That's, uh. That takes some dedication I will say, there. Sundara getting this close to her it, it is confirmed that as you look at like the kind of like striations on the the material this does actually appear to be bone yes. so do we want to wake her up and like question her uh or are we like what happens if we drag her all the way back to the to, to hq and then we had to all ass all the way back over here because you know she tells us we gotta come back over here to figure out what the fuck's going on. I don't think we should safer? deal with her at all. We should just give it to the authorities. She, to... By the way, she's not unconscious. Oh, yeah. She's just sitting there, like, glaring at you all. Oh, okay. Uh, I have uh, kept uh, one hand on her shoulder, though. To, you know. So, uh. This was a try to run off. So, she, 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 does she look like she understands us, Alex? Like, what we're saying and stuff? Make an insight check. Uh, insight. I got a 21. 21. Wow. Um, so as your party is kind of shouting over each other and <laughs> people are talking, and you're contributing to it too, but as you do, you also just watch her. And it doesn't appear that she's actually paying much attention to anything that anyone is saying, but she is very closely, like, shifting her gaze from basically the closest members of the party to her. Like, she looks like someone who's got some kind of backup, and they're waiting for their moment. Hmm. Hmm. 
Oh shit. Okay. Uh. Um. I try to communicate that to the group. I'm not sure how I would, how I would do that. Uh. Guys, she's hold on, hold on, hold on, guys, guys, wait, 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 wait. Everyone, take a deep breath. Look at this bitch. She's she looks crafty. She's looking crafty. Look at her. You, you, what's going on here? You got some friends. You got some friends coming to rescue you. You it's a watch. As you say that, even beyond the gag, you see like the biggest smile creep across her face. Oh, that's not good. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay, I throw her <laughs> over my shoulder and I start walking back towards down. Oh, I just completed the fire. Come on. I mean we can We're not gonna yeah. stay out here. Alright. Speaking of which, make a uh, constitution saving actually you make two constitution saving throws for your way up and for now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh hold on, let me find my saves. Constitution? Okay, I'm proficient in that. Okay. So first one, ooh, nice. First one I got twenty. Second one, I, I got eight. Okay. So it's right about at this time that you kind of stumble a little bit as you begin to follow the group, and you realize, oh, I can't feel my feet right now. God damn it! And then you're like, oh wait. I can't actually remember the last time I felt my feet. I think it was way back on the hike. Um, so you are going to be slowing down your group a little bit because okay. you are getting near frostbited. Okay. Uh, guys, uh, on, on reflection, and as we know, hindsight is putty putty, but uh, I don't think sandals was the best choice of footwear <laughs> uh, to hike up this mountain. Uh, I can't feel my feet, and I would like to warm them by that fire that we just left. Do, do we have five of those drinks potions. that, those potions that gave us cold and heat resistance? Uh, I thought you used them all. I think we might well, use them There's only four all. of us. Smoothie. Oh, but smoothie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I didn't, I didn't use one, did I? I didn't drink one. I thought you only had four. I know I, I used one. one. I used one. Of fire. But I remember specifically someone, there was at least one person that was like left out because you guys had to allocate them. Yeah, okay. Never okay. mind. Oh, damn it. Um, I will, um, shit. Guys, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not doing okay. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. This uh, this robe is definitely meant for fashion, and not uh, not for warmth. I ignore the wizard. Well, just just sit by the fire. I, I start shooting closer to the stack because he's large, and I figure out if he gets a good amount of body heat. And with the combined body heat of the druid he has on his shoulders, I'm pretty sure there's some warmth there. So, like, I try to slyly uh. uh Little, a little closer to the stack. Right, you kind of like waddle over to the stack. There is not an ounce of warmth coming off his body. God damn it. It's almost quite the opposite. It's like it's a stone statue that's just unimpeded by. Oh! You took the potion though, did you? Yeah, I did. So, there actually is a very. Um, it's almost like a heated rock. It's just like going, it's actually like uh, there's almost like a bit of steam that's always like surrounding the stack right now. Um, it helps a little bit, but it doesn't really help the feet situation. So, yeah. is he like right next to me and complaining? He's not complaining, but he it's very clear that like he's not going to be able to keep up with you for much longer. Can I pick him yeah, up? Like, How big is he? God, guys, come on. Um, he's your size. You could, but you'd have to drop the druid. Okay, never Wait, mind. Uh, one, uh, Sorry. Oh, this, uh, I appreciate the thought, though. You know, we could always just try to unpack her and talk to her. No, no. Can we do that? I like that idea. Can we do that next to, like, a fire? 
Perhaps uh, if, if I do think we need to stop and stay by a fire. Understand. understand, there are witches that can cast without using their hands. If you ungag her, you could put us all in peril. What if, also, what if uh, she could call for help? Exactly. Don't what if, uh, know if she's alone. Well, why don't we hold a dagger to her throat and then yeah. ungag her, and if she says anything suspicious, we slit it. I, and we send her back to the deep water. I like that idea. Lead on this. You know I, what? I turn to the druid. We're, all, we're not going to start with that. Can we discuss this by a fire, though? I think we just did this by a fire. We, we do need a fire. That's fine. Well, I got a fucking a fire. fire, brothers. He's got a fire. <laughs> Sit by the I fire. I think it's a bad idea to stay here. Zach just turns around and just starts hobbling towards the fire they left behind. So, uh, you... you you guys have not seen the fire yet. What I will say is, Cass, what you didn't need to say is, because to make a fire, you would need some kind of shelter. Uh, what? Um, and looking around, there was... Oh, 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 the, wait, 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 wait. The beginning uh, Alex? of Alex? a cave. Alex. Yes. Bad idea. Can, can Kazak, uh, Kazak, Cass, and Leoman's tiny hut? Yeah. Let me so I do that. While everyone's kind of I'm arguing, done. I kind of like hobble off, but I'm just like, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna throw <laughs> up a... So, Cass, you, you lead everyone, cause, because the the weather is starting to kick up, and you lead everyone back to the mouth of this cave, um, where you've got a nice little fire going. Um, there is a very obvious stench coming from inside this cave, um, and it smells much like the beasts that you just killed. Yeah, I will actually. Well, I wouldn't have built the fire here uh, <laughs> if, if 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 this is the cave that the chimeras are from. Like you can you can see inside the whole cave and it is empty. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. It's not like a, a deep cave formation, but it's it's almost less of a cave and more of like a like a mouth of a cliff that hangs over um, but it just does provide shelter from the wind and you just wouldn't have been able to like start a fire anywhere else okay all right Claire. park it here with the uh yes. tiny hut or something tiny can, can you remove yeah, we can do the cave or the hut I don't care. these yeah. bones in her head without killing her they look like very old wounds i could attempt to, but if I fail, she could die. What do we? How about we threaten to pull the bones out of for I, I can, I can preserve her from death, but if these have any dark magical connection, I have no control over what it does if I pull them out. Here's my thinking. There's eight bones in the head, and six dead heads down there. With bones. Yes. Which means yes. there's two possible things still alive. So there's a Trust chimera me, missing in head. Or, or it is reversed is and not... there are two dead creatures and six things still alive. Exactly. We this is not a, a chance game. If I pull the wrong one I don't know what these are connected to. If I pull the wrong one, I can pull one and she could die. Yep. Does she lose... look like if we ungag her and talk to yeah. her that she's going to even answer any of our questions? Like oh. while we're debating all of this? Um, it's hard to know because you guys have literally just talked the whole time. Um, I mean, it... I know, like you put yourself in her shoes, it's hard to know how one would act, but you're just kind of glaring yeah. at all of you and just going wherever the stack is like pushing her around to. The stack like he just... hasn't been particularly gentle with the way he's been handled. Can you just set no, her down by the way? Can, can we question her? I, w I would like to question her. I'm, I'm, my vote is, is for questioning her. I think Let's it's a very bad idea to ungag the mage. I don't think. Exactly. I think we would can. have contingency plans. I'm, I'm going through a few spells that I... There's not many spells that are just purely verbal. The, the oh, are, are, are you a druid? Or, or, 
I'm a wizard, and, you know, help us with a lot of spells. And oh, so you know all the druid spells, then? You know what? You know what? You know what, Stack? You know what? I do. I do know all the druid spells. I doubt it. Whatever, your funeral, uh, I'm Gagger. Okay. She kind of... <laughs> and, like... I immediately slap her in the face. Okay. Oh, well, that, no. Jeez. We don't need to do that. That's not the way to... Just my to gosh. Set, set a title? You guys haven't done very many interrogations, have you? Kazak, Kazak immediately, immediately jumps to the stack side to play good cop while he plays bad cop. Okay. Uh, Kazakh, I've done many interrogations. I'm so sorry for my uh, for my friends here. We're just a little excited, as you could uh, as you could see. There's a faint bit of like. I heard that. I heard that. Right now. Um, you see, her eyes right now are just completely jet black. Ah, oh, fuck. Put the gag back on. And Put the gag back on. I would say not only that, but where you, where you would see, like, a bit of your own reflection in her eyes, there is not just one, but you see between 16 and 30 reflections of yourself within oh. her eyes in almost like a prison. Oh, so she's got, like, insect almost. eyes? Almost. Did she have that before? Uh, not that you noticed. Oh, it wasn't like, that you know, was 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 fucking wild shape. It looked like it was a fucking wild shape. The stack, slap her again, slap her again. I slap her again. Okay, this time make an attack roll. Okay. I just, I just throw up my hands and to go. I'm, I'm just facing out the mouth of the cave. We, yes, we need to. What I'd be doing at this point is trying to help build some form of camp. Well, they fight over who, what they, we do with the druid. Because at this point, we need to rest. I get that. We need, we need the wizard needs rest. I will help in whatever way I can to help build a shelter. Is this an advantage? Like, yeah. Twenty one. Okay. So with this, you watch as uh, Kaza kind of steps back, going slap her again, slap her again, and you watch as um, with a hefty backhand. Mind you, there's a big size difference between these two individuals. Uh, the yeah. druid goes flying, like, across the campfire, slams into the cave rock, and oh. falls onto the ground not moving. I feel I feel like Christ. when you're slapping someone, you're gonna grab them with a, like, backhand. I don't think you're just like, fuck it. When you're interrogating uh, someone, you have I mean, a... That's it. what I do. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would say, like... No, I just... That happening, I with that happening, and with... Kazakh jumping back quickly as if something was happening, and the stack stepping now into his space, basically like hip checking him out of the way, and like coming in with a slap. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. You don't feel like you hit her any harder than you did previously, but she goes flying across the cave side, like hits the wall, and falls onto the earth. I was go over to her. Was your intention? To, I my the intention was to like break concentration. All the intention was to be like break a fucking neck. Does Stack not know his own strength kind of thing, or...? Stack doesn't like magic users. <laughs> no, Stack he does not. goes over he not... to her and re-gags her. Okay. I cast Spare uh, Dine on her again. Light of okay. Valindry, you guys. You guys are killing me. Just leave her alone. Leave her in the corner. We'll figure it out later. You two should not be allowed to interrogate anybody. She is not you know a fighter. Just let her be. You know gag her. We will get to town where if something goes wrong, we have reinforcements. We will rest tonight and let this be. We will take watch. I get it. Uh, Kaz. Kazik. You are tired. You're cold. We're all hungry. Let us just make camp. We will stay on watch. I will take first watch if you need me to. We all have food. We don't need to rest. We don't, wait. we don't need to wait here overnight. That seems like a terrible idea. Well, didn't you say what's the weather like? Because I thought it, the weather was getting worse. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, I was imagining like picking out. Because it's the middle of the night, and this guy has like half a shirt on and sandals. It might be best to wait until... And some of us only have a couple HPs left. 
<laughs> oh shit, yeah. How is Sundara? Are you all fucked up? This whole time I've been limping. I am just like holding on to a giant gash in my side and limping. Oh, oh Jesus Christ, I'd run over you. I'm, I'm so sorry, Sundara. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm... No, I mean, you don't have to apologize. That's you already saved my life like three times. It's fine. It's fine. No, that, 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 no, here. And I, I do my, um, I do my preserve life and I can cast. Um, up to half your HP. I cannot put you over half. Holy shit. That's amazing. How many hit points is that? Um, like 17. Okay, so I cast Preserve Life. I can do up to 25 and spread them to whoever needs them other than that. Everybody within 30 feet. So I give 17 to Sindara. Heal no, your wounds. For... Else? Yeah, the other eight, whoever wants them, yes. If we're going to rest here, I'm not going to take them. I How are your toes, Cassidy? <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't think I took any... I, I Did I take any HP damage, Alex, or was you it more like... Any, you didn't take any hit point damage, but I will say, with that bit of healing, it'll clear the, the chill condition that you currently have. Nice. My, my toes are feeling much better. I appreciate you. Uh, work I, again, I am so sorry. I, if I lose track of this, I get lost in the moment sometimes. Let me know if you are hurt, if I'm stupid enough not to see it. I don't want another reoccurrence of my last party. Your last party? Thank you, Alara. That was very oh. kind. Um, anyway, at this point, like, Sandara is standing between... I, I think it's like Sundara and Alara standing in front of the druid and kind yeah. of just like trying to shoo everybody else away. I'll say Samugi yeah. is there too. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. We can eat some food and rest and Alara and I can watch over the druid and maybe Kazik and Varric, you guys can go sit somewhere else where you aren't slapping people into the wall. If you take that gag off, I will kill her. I will, yeah, did she try to kill you guys? I don't know, it's gonna... Trust me, we will not take the gag off. We are not here to interrogate mm -hmm. her here. We need to wait until we get back in town. Yeah. Where we have reinforcements and a controlled state. Yeah, I'm not opposed to sending people to the deep water and killing them, okay? I'm just saying we don't need to torture people, that's oh. all. Okay, I, I agree, I agree, no torture. Uh, quick, quick point before we retire, or before I take my nap anyways. I uh, remember, remember that time where it looked like she was waiting for someone, like she expected help to be coming? Uh, do we need to worry about that through the night, or can I sleep you know, peacefully? No, also, you can't. I mean, uh, you shouldn't just fall asleep and like take all your clothes off and go running around naked. No, we're in the middle of a mountain. You should stay prepared. First of all, I don't know how you knew I slept on my birthday. <laughs> but that was private information, and I'd appreciate it if you <laughs> didn't just put that on blast. <laughs> As it was outraged. <laughs> 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 in my in my inventory, if I do have a blanket, so I probably bring that or the like, like as you guys are having this interaction, like please don't. <laughs> I sent the blanket away. Thank you. In Kazakh's defense, as um, as Kazakh kind of stamps his foot to make his point and kind of gives that like very sassy snap of his head. Um, you know, after having his, you know, well, I never moment, um, uh, he storms off the cave. You, you notice there's really only a few comfortable spots in the cave. Um, one looks like there's some animal bed, like animal furs and things like that, that have made some kind of makeshift bedding. Next to that, you see a couple, uh, what look like various cases that are closed, like large trucks. Oh. Uh, there's three of them specifically. They they all look, they're very not matching. They look like they come from very different places. Huh. Oh, no, it looks like something that the stack might be interested in. 
opening and ripping apart. Maybe opening and ripping apart in the morning. Yeah, Stack goes to sleep. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> you guys figure out the watch. I don't care. Um, do you think, do you think, uh, so I have a tiny hut as a ritual, and it's like a good safeguard in terms of, like, safety. Do we want to try to do that, or do, are we, we trusting in the watch old school style? Yeah. Can you I mean, do no it in a way what a ritual like... is? Thank you. What is a ritual? Oh, it just doesn't, it won't cost me, like, a spell slot. Oh. I'll just, uh, I'll just take me some time to do it. Is Not it something you could do as, like, more like a doorway to the cave? To like it, close off. I think cave. so, yeah. If I just put the dome, it's a 10 foot radius, a, mo a mobile dome of force. Springs into existence around. Oh no, it, it's centered around me. So springs into existence around and above me and remains stationary for the duration, which is eight hours. I think we should dome it. That sounds awesome. Don't, maybe we can just dome it inside the cave. Yeah. Kind of can we all fit in yeah. it? Yeah, it says up to yeah. nine octaves. Okay. Pretty much like an igloo. Like, yeah, igloo. yeah, that's good. Yeah, like yeah. We yeah. we suffocate <laughs> from the smoke from the fire. <laughs> oh. My man uh, really uh, does not like magic. I appreciate that. No, knowing <laughs> Alex, knowing Alex, he might get pinned down. Uh, hold on, I gotta make sure we're not gonna get smoked out. Um. Please, we. Oh, because the smoke from the fire got we don't, you. Yeah, we don't, we don't okay. need the fire. Okay, so objects, objects which could be considered smoke maybe within the dome can move through it freely. But if you're outside of it, you can't pass through it. Well, smoke Perfect. can pass through. Okay. Yeah. I will at some point get you motherfuckers with carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> I get a carbon monoxide alarm. <laughs> yeah, and the atmosphere. It's just going to be like, okay. Like, that's what they can watch you guys go down for a long rest. And that's game. No one ever wakes up. Roll your characters, motherfucker. Game over, fellas. <laughs> we, we all roll fucking con saves. Everybody fails. Everybody dies. It was yeah, all con save. There's no con saving against the silent killer. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to put us in a room with just nitrogen gas. Is, isn't that a thing with uh they say like a lot of the old haunted houses that were you know legendary haunted houses back in the day like when they go in and measure that kind of stuff they actually see that there was like carbon monoxide leaks in a lot of them i mean i'm sure it causes like hallucinations and shit um but yeah uh yeah but uh, light purple crystalline igloo kind of thing springs up into existence when everyone's ready after 11 minutes of um humbo jumbo uh, Spanglish, uh, arcane magic. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's from the cat. It's pretty, pretty high level. tight. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> is the druid in here, too? Uh, uh yeah. Yeah, she yeah. damn well better be. <laughs> how many people, how many, how many of us total are there? Seven with the druid. Seven. Alara weighs is like 80 pounds soaking wet, so she's very... Yeah, Sundara's also very uh, small. <laughs> and the stack is willing to cuddle with anyone. <laughs> I can make Except myself Except for the druid. Small. <laughs> Except, well, even the druid, I don't care. No, no, you and Kazik. I think me and uh, Sundara are protecting the druid from you and Kazik. <laughs> <laughs> she's okay. safe between us. We appreciate your your bodyguard style, though. <laughs> so, uh, I hope everyone's comfortable. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a uh, napping over here. Uh, thank you for this blanket. I'll put it to good use. And uh, good night. <laughs> fresh air. Uh, how are you doing over there, Cass? Oh, I'm fine. I'm getting real fucking tired of hearing y'all bickering. But, oh, you know, well, you, you do it. besides that, it's fine. It's... Well, you know, this is... We all do to each other. We all have a bit of a different perspective on how to deal with things. So it's... It's common. I've yeah. seen it plenty of times. 
but I do feel quite safe in our camps. That's okay. Well, we um, survived the chaos of a prison break. This, I guess, in comparison, <laughs> seems not too bad. It is quite the feat. I, uh, I wish I were there to have aided you in that. Nah, it's fine. You're busy getting your other group killed. I understand. You see a sad face. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'm sure it wasn't totally your fault. I I should have been should have been sharper, nonetheless. Uh, but I will do all I can to be at my highest alert with you, even though. Like muttering under her breath, like just now with Sandar not noticing that she was like dying. <laughs> I am I'm doing all I can, and I, I apologize for my. Uh, um, I'm not great with words. Um, not noticing how badly you are hurt. If you are hurt, please just just yell at me. <laughs> like, yeah. I have been. The magic I was given is still new to me. There is a uh, a long story to it, but um, I have uh, I have stepped into this role as hard as I can, and I will do all I can for all of you. Well, you'll be the first one I run to. Nobody else seems to be able to uh, patch people up. And hey, if you ever need an well, animal you... to have a quick therapy session, I got you too. I, I honestly absolutely loved that. That was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my life. I, I, I thought you were going to kill a bear. I did not know you were going to speak to one that day. And that you got information, which I still don't know how. Uh, it's that easy. That was the, they, by yeah. far the coolest magic I have ever seen. They, uh, they speak a certain language, just takes a, well, actually, it was, it was taught to me by, um, someone important back home. But yeah, you just gotta learn how to tap into the nature, you know, Oops. sort of mindset. I am, I am jealous of this magic that you were taught. I was taught a few druidic abilities, um, Do you like music? Uh, anyway, here's Wonderwall. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, just well, just softly, uh, ADHD strumming. <laughs> while, while she starts talking. I was I was taught druidic abilities myself, but not near as in depth as that. Just a couple things that may come in handy in a tight situation. Pass. Make a perception check. Okay. Oh shit. That's never good. Um, that is <laughs> not good at all. Uh, 11. You're killing it in this cave with this song right now. Fuck yeah. Okay. Um, alright. Um, the Ooh. druid has not moved since any of this has happened. Um, what are you all doing? We're ready to sleep. Are, are we're, ta Sandara we're taking wants, a rest? Yeah, okay. before like going to sleep, Sandara wants to like do some spell preparation and she like yeah. touches. Yeah, we'd all be taking a short rest. Why don't we take a couple hours? I'll I'll take it out. I'm I think we're cool. taking a long rest. I'm long rest in this motherfucker. Yeah, long rest in. We're not going um, out until the morning. Uh, yep. Alara, are you staying up? Or are we first shift? Um, yeah, yeah. First shift, I only need to rest for two hours, kind of meditate. Okay. I'll rest and then, or I'll stay awake and then if you want to trade out. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'll I can trade out, out with you guys too because I also only need to sleep for like, or trance for a little bit. I will be right back <clears throat> here. Grab something real quick. For uh, if everybody is asleep except for Alara right now. Um, like about an hour in, I'll just... Is that what's happening? Yeah, if everyone's asleep. Yeah. Before I go to sleep, I do cast some spells. I'll cast one on Varric, another gift of alacrity while he's sleeping. 
and I'll extend it and then I'll re-up my mage armor for a bit too. Ooh. Can we use our new spells yet? Yeah. Mm. How long do I have the gift of alacrity? I extended it, so 16 hours. And Jesus. what do I add to my... Oh, um, 1D. D8, yeah. thank you. Um... I'm going to cast Tiny Servant on my dagger, but not tell it to do anything yet. Except for wake me up if something sketch is going on, I guess. I don't know how that spell works, but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Um, okay. So you, any tiny object, you can make it get cool. arms and legs and follow your command. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, it's really cute. So adorable. <laughs> So it actually, it animates. Okay, cool, I need to check this out. Um, oh, it says it sprouts little arms and legs. Isn't that really cute? <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so you cast it on the dagger and you watch as almost like, you know, fast forwarding or like time lapsing through watching like a little plant grow. You can see these tiny little nubbins like come out of the hilt of the dagger and then eventually this thing just kind of like almost like a little baby deer it just like pops up on all fours and then just like raises itself up and your dagger is now standing and you have this I don't know I can't say that you've ever had the sensation of what it's like to create life but this is it right here right now you just created this thing with the fuck did I miss? <laughs> I cast Tiny Servant on my dagger and it grew arms and legs. Would yeah. you cast Animate Object? <laughs> it's Tiny okay. Servant and in the spell it says that it grows little arms and legs. Okay. So you tell it to wake you up. You want the dagger to wake you up if something goes down. Sounds good. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Okay. Well, just in case you guys fall asleep oh or something, God. I don't know. Wrote, you're like, oh, oh. I can't I <laughs> so Don't fool me, just wake me up, Dagger. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, so you... You use like a spoon. I don't have a spoon! It's <laughs> the sharpest object I can find. You're alive now. Oh. Like, well... <laughs> It'll be so helpful. Sundara kind of like curls up at the end of the hut. Uh, there's this dagger standing between her and everyone else, and you watch as it's kind of like pointing its business end at anyone, and it, it's almost kind of like doing this, like, it's like yeah, that's, what I do. that's right. Um, okay. Um, so while this is happening, Alara, you're the only one that's awake right now. I, uh, look at that like, uh, Everybody's asleep. Shit. Come here. I <laughs> call to the dagger. Like, yeah. yeah, it is not regarding you at all. Um, you do notice uh, the druid has begun to stir a little bit. So she's alive. You watch as she just kind of like curls up, kind of like distancing herself even further from like the rest of your group and just tries to find the a ruin goes? yeah no the ruin but, will not move if i'm next to it because it's me and sundara on the side of her she, if she moves we're keeping her put well she's got like her back against the wall she just like gets tries to press in deeper into the wall i would grab her immediately and pull her closer to me knowing that druids control elements okay um so as like, she moves you, know, you kind of like yank her closer and she just like is kind of lulling her head and like looks up at you. I would, I would look at her very closely, like, please, darling, don't, don't make me do this. And I, I brush the side of my head, and as I do, my fingernails get extremely long and sharp pointed, even more than they are now. 
and from it, she'd feel small drips of what feels like acid dripping from them. Don't make me do this. She she looks like she's trying to. Like, she looks like she's trying to mouth something to you, like she's asking. I very much like druids, but don't make me kill you. And then the form would go back to my teeth actually, as I talk, instead of being like normal teeth, would be all fucking sharpened. Like, don't make me do this. I very much like druids. And I appreciate your magic. But your days right now are going to stop. So, with that, she just kind of... Her demeanor certainly changes, and she just, like, looks back at the wall, and then, like, takes her head and literally, like, hits her head against it to kind of, like, demonstrate to you that, like, I'm not going to be able to move through this. And then she, like, slings it back into her position. This is not, this is no more violent situation. I apologize for killing the beasts you may have raised or summoned or whatever have you. If all goes well, and we do not see you as a dark caster, this can turn in your favor. Understand, we are taking you to a place where they collect beasts. That is why they were here, or why we are here. As they collect saying, dark beasts. As you're yes. saying, you notice that her eyes go from a place of, um, like, just listening and calmness to panic. And you watch as she starts to, like, grunt a little bit in pain. And she starts, like, shifting, like there's something happening. And I look around, see if there's anything, like, while holding her, like, by her collar, probably, is there anything going on around us that I can see? Like, something, if there's something wrong. They're trying to see something. Yes. Give me a perception check. Nice. Uh, good start to the day. Uh, give me one second. Perception. Uh, ooh, 23, bitch. 23. Um, so it's not so much what you see as much as what you feel. Because as you're okay. grabbing the collar and the kind of like knuckles of your hand are touching like her, kind of the front of her chest, yeah. you can feel vibrations within her body. Like, there's something moving. And then you feel something just kind of like brush along your finger. And you look and you watch as it looks like there are thousands of bugs in her skin that are like eating their way through her flesh. Oh. And magic is this. You watch as though those grunts kind of become more and more frequent and she's almost like convulsing at this point and you watch as they're now starting to burrow out of her skin and you see that at this point it's there's just now a very copious amount of like black blood that is just kind of slowly oozing out of like thousands and thousands of little bite wounds that are coming from the inside. Okay, can I cast Cure Wounds on her to try to like seal it back in? Okay. Um, so you reach out and cast to cast Cure Wounds. Yes. Um, so go ahead and roll for the, the healing you're attempting to do to seal this. Uh, 12 points of healing. Okay, so as you reach through to touch her, you get your healing spell off, but as you touch her chest, her whole body caves in. It's hollow. 
and you watch as it's like you've just pushed through a bee's nest. As now her whole body just crumples and it's just like a husk of skin. And there's just this weird formless face, like expressionless, almost like a like a mask that just kind of folds inwards. And you're now left with this swarm of insects that is now spiraling its way out. Out of the the what? Out of the hut. I will cast guiding bolt down on the swarm that's going out. Trying okay. to break whatever magic this is. Okay. So hold on one second. What's interesting? So it'd be thirteen. If that matters. Um. Okay, sorry. Sorry. It's not. It's not guiding bolt. It's a sacred flame. Sorry. It's a deck save of hers. Want. So go ahead oh, okay. and go ahead and make an initiative check. Okay. Ooh, fucking shit! Natural, goddamn one. Okay. <laughs> she was that. So too quick. You watch as um, you watch as this swarm of insects quickly starts to buzz away, and you reach out and cast this spell. Yeah. It does not get through the tiny level. Fuck! But they're outside of it, so I would thought it would have, like, came down on it. You are affected it. Not it. passed through this. So, with that... Oh, you can't cast. Gotcha. Yep, gotcha. Yep. So, uh, huh. with that, I would imagine some of you start to stir awake as... Yeah, I'd yell. As, well, as part of the spell, Alara yells out to cast this spell, and you watch as fire, this like radiant flame, just kind of crashes against the bounds of Kazakh's spell, and almost like encircles the uh, uh, the hut. And those of you kind of towards the edges, which is most of you, this like radiant fire just like laps against your skin, and you don't feel anything, it doesn't hurt you, it just, it's almost like a visual effect. Um, and you look around, and the druid is pretty clearly gone. There's just like, there's just like a little, like a stain of black ichor where she sat. Damn it. Oh, great. Anybody wake up. I, I, I did everything I could. She turned into fucking bugs. I thought it was contained in here. Oh, she, uh... Oh, the druid wild shaped out of the rope that we tied her in. I should have... I didn't know that was fucking possible. <laughs> I thought in here that she was contained. Uh... Again, I think being 2020, it probably should have... <laughs> probably should have... Uh, well, it's fine. She's gone. Decision. No, Do we chase her? Really matter. No, I no. think we should right. sleeping. If she has a face, to the this druid can clearly be a potent enemy. I mean, well, to be fair, our task was to opinion, handle the chimeras, and we did handle the chimeras. The beast I've ever seen. And if we go back to the guild, we tell them that we handled the chimeras. Them, that is extremely oh, what is happening? Yeah, I don't know. I'm losing it. We we are not. Our job is not for that. As it just starts reading from a spell book while everyone argues. The sack goes back to sleep. It's okay, Anora. It's not your fault. It's really it's Kazakh's fault. We thought the hut was impenetrable from both sides. I thought I literally thought that she could not get out of this. I thought we could cast out of it. After seeing that I can. Well, now you I know how you it works. Can. I don't know how your magic works. I just thought we were in a sealed, safe unit that she could not escape. Yep. Well, I'm gonna go back to sleep. Was I was not able to get a long rest either. Fuck. 
It's only uh, been like an hour. Eddie, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, just checking. Um, yeah, so it's it literally has only been an hour. Uh, so if you guys wish, you can. If you wish to stay in this place, you can take a long time. Okay, I'm going back to bed. Yeah, me too. Sadara, like, that tries to comfort fun. Alara and pats her on the shoulder. It's fine, it's fine. It's, it's okay. I'm, I'm feeling horribly disappointed <laughs> in myself. Oh, it's, it's not like Sorry, we needed God. her, really. If I lose another group, I quit. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, is anyone taking watch? Or are you... I thought we had the little knife. I'm pretty good about the hut. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I need my knife to be... It's Cassius. No, I'm going to sleep. I will be uh, watching for hours, but I tell my dagger... Situation. <laughs> Wait, hey, so the dagger's stuff? keeping watch, right? Yeah, well... Oh, yeah, um, oh, yeah. Cass... or uh, Alora is, sorry. Oh. I will say, you and your dagger were alerted at the same time, because things pretty much got weird, like... Because here's the thing, your dagger can't fucking see. It has <laughs> blind sight. So, like, if you really start freaking around and acting weird, it's not gonna be like... You know, the dagger's like, you know, I've been... I've been sent alive for, for all of 45 minutes. <laughs> what is my purpose? Who the fuck who has that on that? <laughs> <laughs> who, who cast the thing on the dagger? I did. <laughs> okay, so at any rate, um, yes, but you have a stern talking to with your dagger. Um, you kind of pull it aside and you're like, I need to get your goddamn head in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm sorry. Who cast that on so, the dagger? Can you not, Eddie? Uh, We're can, telling you, Eddie. Can you not hear us? I can. You pointed at somebody, I'm like, all right, I can't see it. No, I'm not pointing at anyone, I can promise you. I did, Sadara did. Them Dara did. Oh. Okay, I think you're, I, I think you're on a pretty big delay. I think that's fine. It must be, I literally had my money on Cassius or Cass. <laughs> so, you are all taking a long rest, is anyone taking a watch? Okay. Um. So we'll restart I can't hear some bars. I'll be I'll jump back in now. That makes sense. If we die, we die. Um So There we go. Now we got everything back. Hey. Sorry. That's why I'm so fucking lost. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like I'm like the door is dead quiet. Like you were, you were talking okay. over her for like a full minute. Oh shit! I'm so sorry. I I literally was like, I thought it added to it. That, yeah, uh, it, it really so yeah, there's a lot of noise for Um, Varric, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Got it. Ah, he's gonna six inches Am I bad? I, I literally am so lost. I'm like, why why did Sindara dump out now? Everybody's telling me I'm not hearing a conversation. <laughs> Seven. Okay. Very good. <laughs> um, so, with that, um, your group takes a long rest. You wake up. The day is yours. Uh, Eric, you did not get a great rest. Uh, you had a recurring nightmare. Uh, you relive the death of your son. Oh. Time and time and time again. You've had this dream before, but not like this. This time, it's every time it happens. You this time you know you're in a dream, and your body is just locked into striding across that pub just the way that you did. 
and every time you look down and just watch as your son gets hit with that lightning spell. Um, and every time the lightning hits you, it just resets. And every time you're just trapped within your own body, you can't scream, you can't move, you can't even control... All you, all, The only thing you can control is you can control where you look. So you can look away, but you still hear it, you still feel it. And after about the third or fourth time, something starts to change. Because as you as you begin walking down that same path, you notice you feel lips. You feel someone's hot breath on your ear whispering to you. And it's just out of the corner of your sight, so every time you go to look, it's like that presence moves with your head. But you do see the faint, matted patches of hair of the druid, as you do. So after reliving this nightmare hundreds and hundreds of times, you wake up, and you are thirsty. You need a drink now. You've never needed a drink so bad. Did you need alcohol? Yep. Hey, Kazik, can you speak to make sure I have everybody talking? Hello. There, okay, good. I have everybody. I just, when, when Sundara went dark, it was just her, like, screensaver thing. I'm like, shit. Like, I just wanted to make sure I had everybody. And again, sorry about that. I was so lost on what the fuck I was doing wrong. Okay. Okay. I literally was sitting there like I had my money on Kaz or Kazik <laughs> casting fucking animate goddamn object. Fucking dagger. Like, alright, we got this. Who has alcohol? Uh. I, mean, I, I don't know if we brought any alcohol up the mountain, did we? Seems like I a really I weird know. thing to have first thing in the morning. I'm not gonna like. Are you. Is everything going okay? Oh well, yeah, it's great. I always wake up needing a drink of alcohol. Oh. Let's, let's get back to the city. Now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. That's a sarcasm. Yes. Oh, a bit of observation. A bit of sarcasm you might not want to poke at. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not judging. I, I appreciate a good, good sarcastic uh, equip, especially when it comes to alcohol and stuff. So, yeah, let's go to the Oh, I'm glad you appreciate my humor. I'm definitely looking for your um, your appreciation. That's what I strive for every day. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. He More sarcasm. sarcasm. <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, no, 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 oh, okay, oh, that was, oh, okay, okay, I'm just gonna, so, I wanna go. Yeah, I think we should I'd, I'd, yes, I'd, I'd walk over to the stack gently. Are you okay, darling? No. Uh, you have taken two points of psychic damage. Eric. So I didn't long rest, Eric. and I took two more points? That's right. Oof, damn. damn. So no, the rest of us did long rest, right? Yep. Fair. I, I, I. Uh, the stack. Sorry, I don't. I don't actually know your your real name. I don't think anybody's called you by it. Uh, is I, I not mean to pry? Is everything all right? I. Well, it's been a long night. No, my son is dead. So, no, not everything is all right. Can we just get back to town so I can yes. have a drink? My condolences. I will buy your first drink. And I don't want your sympathies. I just want you to move quicker. Trust me, my love. It's not sympathy. I mean not to be insensitive, but with every 
death is a bit of fate in touched. I put or... both my hands on her shoulders. <laughs> and I look her directly in the eyes. Has anyone <laughs> ever told you to shut up? Yes. Wait, well, is this let's death, try is that death? now. Okay. This we'll is one do. of those times. <laughs> <We'll do. laughs> um, I look over to you guys. I tried. <laughs> I did, I would say, Cass, you've been around um, Barrack long enough. Go ahead and make an insight check. Yeah. Oh god damn, I just dropped my metal dice in I'd say, um, Sundara, this would extend to you too. Uh, that's a 17. And that is a 22. Okay. Um, so I'll say. Cass, uh, Varric is being particularly bitchy this morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a little out of the ordinary. Uh, okay. Andara. Um, you've, you've gotten to know Varric a little bit over the course of this journey. Um, it's it would be pretty easy for anyone to see that he's a pretty volatile character. Um, pretty quick to anger, not very diplomatic. And it doesn't take a priest to see that this might be someone with a bit of a drinking problem. However, he's usually got it under way better control than this. And there doesn't appear to be a really inciting reason for that that makes sense. So this the way he's acting is odd. Even for him. Okay, so following on the heels of her only other friend being possessed and subsequently um, needing to be exercised, that was kind of her first suspicion. She's like, wait, is he being possessed now? She's worried about some weird, creepy magic and stuff going on, and it's going to be paying extra attention now. Okay. So, with that, the morning is yours. Um, with the benefit of daylight, um, you look around the room and cast, you specifically, your eyes fall onto one of the trunks that's in this cave. Um... These appear to be looted from the uh, uh, merchant caravans that were being attacked, and hence why the um, the guild was sent after uh, uh, these creatures to begin with. Um, okay. Something that catches your eye on one of the cases, there is a big, beautifully engraved. And it looks, it surely can't be, but it looks like the insignia of a uh, master craftsman dwarvish luthier who is the best loot maker in the world. Uh, an individual by the name of Giovanni Restore. Um, his instruments fetch a very, very high price point, and they are specifically crafted for each individual that makes them. But again, it's not. It can't be that. But that's what you notice. Okay. Uh... Can we search the chest? Yeah, how much loot is in here? Is there oh, alcohol? There's like three trunks. In a book, guys, there's, you know, there's stuff. Maybe. But, hmm. Should we, uh, 
Do you think it's trapped? Do the guild regularly uh, secure the... Well, I'd like to open the, the first the, one. The hunters, the hunters came supplies. Maybe this is what that is. Yeah, well, I mean, let's so check that out. You take, you take the top trunk and pull it off and, like, um, kind of slam it on the cave floor. Cass, you're, you might be getting very nervous because there's a large Goliath that's acting very Goliath-y around possibly a very expensive, you know, priceless instrument, if that is the case. Um, Just a little more gentle. Uh, and that would be that would be great. I shoot daggers at him I with my eyes. Yeah, listen. I've been around you long enough. You have your days. Just be gentle with the crates. Sorry for your son. It'd be a for you, Cass. For you. Um. So you want to attempt to open the first crate? Yes. Um. Opening the first crate, it looks like just an assortment of very. Um, uh, very expensive Clothes? Yes, clothes. Move it aside, grab the next crate. So the next one is the one with the R sigil on it. Cat. I am gentler with this one. Because he asked me to be gentle. Um, again, it's this would be like if someone was handling a crate, like, with your mother inside of it. Like, <laughs> if, if that truly is a restore loot in there, um, it's, you are getting, your palms are sweating right now. Um, with the stack being anywhere near. I would like to open it. I'm just looking over his shoulder. Okay. He opens it, and sure enough... Um, this is specifically, yes, a uh, restore loot that appears to have been custom built for a client um, up in Charlotte. Or Charlotte. Boy, there's a fancy loot in here. I can see that. I just you want it? I try to feebly push the stack aside, and that doesn't work. I just like slink in front of them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, hmm. It wouldn't be trapped. You already opened it. I'm gonna gently reach in and grab it, inspect it, give a good, like, uh, it's a, like, Pokemon card scale rating. Yeah, so, I mean, you've, you've definitely got, like, the Opera Flower song going on in your head right now. Um, I would say the first thing you do is you just touch the face of the instrument, not with the palms of your hand where all the oils are, but with the back of your hand. And as you do, the grain work on the uh, on the face here, you don't know what kind of wood this is. Uh, it's, it's got this blue tint to it, but it feels like the tree is still alive. Um, and as you just touch it with the back of your hands, it is one of the best feelings you've ever had. Um, as you gently lift the loot up, um, it has specifically no finish on it, which means it's just the pure grain of the wood that has been stained with some kind of, like, burst of color. It's got this faint blue to it that turns into almost like a sunburst yellowish red towards the outside. Um, and as you look at it, you swear it's like... It's like it's pulsing. Um, I get fucking out of Touching the back of it, it feels like this thing was literally, like not that it was carved, but that it was grown. It's got just like ever so slight curves and movements that kind of reflect the course of natural life as opposed to something that has been crafted. Yet, every curve of the instrument is in such a way that it is just begging for you to hold it because you're, it leaves a place for your hands to perfectly rest. Also, perfectly balanced. This is a, this is a 
is fucking gorgeous, right? That is damn. Fuck that person again. That was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. I, I would say. I want to touch it. You, you do watch. You watch it. I mean, you know what? Okay, yeah, these are cool. Cass looks like he's having like a legit experience. Yeah, his, his eyes are just like flickering back and forth. Um. I mean, I if if you want more, I could go in more depth, but to, uh, for the rest of the party, oh, this right, is what you do. Um, you do notice on the, the headstock, <laughs> authenticated, there is um, a little um, like metal token piece that looks like it's made of. It looks like it was actually a pressed platinum coin. That over it, the luthier uh, etched their initials in. Um, the great uh, uh, Giovanni Ristori. Um, I would say you might feel a little uncomfortable even playing this instrument as this is more of like a priceless work of art than something to be handled, especially in a place like this. Um, yeah. This is like high society rich people stuff. Um, like someone's going to be looking for well, someone's looking for us, but um, I, I would I would like to very gingerly take the loot out of the box and and sling my bag off the back of my shoulder, open it up, and just like stick my arm like shoulder deep in there and leave it in my bag. Sorry, so you're doing what now? I'm I'm putting the fancy loot into my disappearing bag. Okay. Um, I open the next box. I would, I would, let you know. You can keep it in the case that it's in, because the disappearing bag. There's, you get the sense this thing's probably enchanted, so it's probably not gonna like age or get etched or anything. But if it were to get a nick, my bag it doesn't. Be... <laughs> I was imagining like my bag just. I, I put it into just a perfectly slotted like version of the instrument. But if it can knock around and like bump and shit, then. The thing is, it can't, but it's more just like, as a guitar player, I imagine, even if it's an extra-dimensional space, it's still a soft case, bro. Okay. <laughs> so, I will say, you have, you have that thought as it goes in, because you're like, man, like, the, case, bro. the edges of this case are soft. I get that it's another dimension, but I just, it's, it gives you just a little bit of, you might want to, like, peek in every now and then. Like, make sure it How big is the case? Can I just carry the case without the box? Can the I? case is pretty big. Okay, well, I keep and, it in my bag. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just letting you know, you might have that thought every now and then. I'm just like, man, I hope it's not getting scratched by extra-dimensional something. <laughs> so, at any rate, so you put it in your bag. Um, I got all my bag. Fuck, I hope I didn't damage it. Um, if it's okay, I would... Not to interrupt this, because was, that was beautiful. Would it be okay to go over to the case of clothes? Yeah, just to yeah. just pick through. Just to pick through. I don't want anything fancy. I just want to pick through to see if there's anything um, nice. Yeah, you can pick through. Um, what is it you'll be looking for? Nothing too bright. Like, just... If there's some good dark silk or or dark suede in there, I would probably pick that up. Absolutely. It will have a bit of like a silver trim in it. It's too shiny. Um, if there's anything worth that looks like it could be worth something that I wouldn't wear, I might roll it up and put it in my bag just like it's, it's disgusting it's all a little bit. Nothing. This is high quality linen that was going to someone who was going to make very nice clothing with it. But they were going to sell to very wealthy people. Okay, I take a roll of it that's too shiny and put it in my bag just in disgust, but it could be worth something. Okay, roll a d20 more. <laughs> uh, that's a six. A roll of six is hot tonight. No, it's my third one. Eric. Um, What's in the last one? You check out the last trunk, and like mana from heaven, 
you see, even before you open up the case, GBR Green Bottle Reserve. Oh, shit. Some of the finest of halfling made liquors that have come out of this side of Orifin. Um, you open up the case, and sure enough, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, six packs of this halfling spirit. I take one and drink it immediately. Okay. Mind you, this is like a full-on like mood jump. It's like a handle right now that you're drinking. Well, okay, then I'll I'll take a quarter of it. So you drink a quarter of it, and it goes down like water that has been mixed with just like sweetness and every pleasurable taste that you can imagine. And here's the thing, it's not enough. Not I, even another, I, I oh, finish Jesus. it off the handle. You finish oh, off Jesus. the handle? Yeah. You're still parched. And you don't feel anything. I grab another handle. At okay. this point, this I, 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 like... I step in. Yeah, go ahead, so yeah, I was gonna say, this is, we've seen very drink. Does this seem like very yeah. drinking? This looks like a man who has wandered in the desert for days and has just found an oasis of water. The way that he's... Uh, again, yeah, I think he's just a problem, problem, but you've never seen it like this. I, I step forward at also, first and then... Push her out of the way. Also, just so you know, each of these bottles is probably going to clock about 500 gold. That's that I will step forward towards him, but see that he has he wants nothing to do with me, and then leave it to Sandara and the rest of you. Like, Merrick, you got the second bottle in hand, and you're, Please go. you're getting there, and but I'm, you probably only yeah. will finish this one off. Yeah, what I reckon is that label. Farrick, don't please don't make me do this magically. Just put the bottles down. It's expensive, if anything, but also you might kill yourself. So, Varric, I will say, looking down, your alcohol tolerance is insane. Like, because yep. this normally would have fucked you up. Yep. Um, you now feel it hit you. Um, you've pretty much gone through that second bottle, just like chugging it. Um, you are intoxicated. So, okay. attack. Ability checks, maybe throws are going to be a disadvantage. But that, like, burning fire within you is sated. Um, Thank God. And now you get a little bit of clarity of mind, because although you're drunk, um, it is a little scary how much you actually needed alcohol. And I'm talking about, like, even beyond anything you've ever felt before, you needed it. I'm gonna take the rest of the bottles and then start walking towards the town. Okay. So you watch as Varric closes oh, the trunk of the Green Bottle Reserve, that. picks it up, and then just starts like stumbling out of the cave. Oh, oh. Okay. Alright, everybody, I'm maybe surround him. I have I, I have no place to, to speak here. I, I will leave this to you. Then, party. Cassie's do Centaur kind of tries to have a sidebar hmm. with Cass without anybody else. Yep, yep, that's why I was keep possibility going. Possibility that he's um, possessed with the new ones. Until I like, know that it's kind of he's acting a little weird. I don't, I don't have a good track record with friends acting weird. Um, I mean, he sometimes gets into little moods, nothing quite like this, but. I don't know how the demon would have, like, maybe they can jump that far? Maybe it's something else. It seems very, um, different. Or just very down, you know? Just not to himself, really. Um, yeah, I mean, his past is terrible. Uh, yeah, it just sounds terrible. I think the best thing we can do right now is kind of surround him. We can all be, he can be our little baby bird on the way down. Uh, yep. 
the only thing he's gonna let us do. I would be like shadowing uh, the stack, like probably ten feet away, just quietly, just walking. If he, if he stumbles too hard, I'd probably catch him if I could. <laughs> he gets squished. <laughs> I've got you. Oh, <laughs> fucking done. <laughs> I would just honestly like I. I understand I have not had my, my place in the group yet, that is perfectly okay. I mean, just here to as, you're, as you're trailing along, the stack is not making great time. Yeah. Um, he's actually moving, you know, about as slow as Kazakh Nine Toes was when he was dealing <laughs> with Near Frostbite. So, you're... You know, you're not in a rush or anything, but like the and the weather is certainly better. You're not having to make constitution saves or anything like that. Um, but it's warmed up to me, it's sort of very 40. sloppily making his way down the mountain. Okay. I kind of hang back a bit. Um, so, uh, what is the plan? They, they told us to leave the bodies of the creatures, right? Yeah. My they, trap. What? Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Is it? Uh, How hard was it to uh, Yeah, make? that was kind of... That was kind of a big move. Uh, well, shit, I... Want the, I want the components back, at least, if we can't carry them back. Yeah. Um, um, I didn't even think of it. So, it's at this point that... Samugi pipes up and just says, I will admit, I got a little bit uncomfortable when everyone was talking over each other and there was talk of torture. So I decided to step away and deconstruct the trap such that we could take it with us. Would you like me to set it out now so you could do magic to it, or should I continue to carry it? Thank God someone <laughs> grabbed it. Thank God someone grabbed it. We can do magic to it on the ship later, if you I would very much look forward to seeing that. And you see that he's pretty much got, like, this clockwork scrap, just, like, all tied up, like, with these leather straps, just in this, like, kind of cube of junk, just, like, strapped on his back. So with that, you begin making your way back to New Callum. Um, you see, uh, you haven't seen the city from this angle. Um, you see one of the great stone bridges that leads across the, um, uh, almost like the harbor. Is the, the city itself is almost on an island adjacent to a cliff edge. Um, you see the tree of Callan, a beautiful, almost like, um, uh, oh god, what are those things called? The, uh, like blossoming, like pink blossoming trees, just out on an island on its own, north of the city. Um, and as you, where are you headed within the city? I need to go back to the creature. Back to the creature company. Yeah. The, the the monster hunter company. Finished the job. Yes. Um, Eric, you are in a great spot right now. Uh, job was done to the completion that you know was expected. Um, yeah, the druid got away, but um, you are feeling you could go for some food right now. As you walk by, you see a very strong-looking full-blood orc that you don't know what he's selling, but it smells very savory and hearty. Um, as you just walk by, he's got like a little, almost like a little food cart, um, and there's like steam and stuff like that coming out from like behind all this, uh, um, like his cart and all that. Um, Let's stop. That's a car. And he just goes, Greetings, friend. You want meat pocket? Hell yeah. Um, 
me. How uh, can I get for a big guy like you? I say two. Give me three. <laughs> he he says you got it, boss, and he just goes down and like he starts like very. Uh, it almost it looks less like someone cooking. You can't see what he's doing with his hands, but it looks like a mad scientist assembling a rock. Cool. And he's just like doing something, and then you see him just like bring his hand up and just like slam something wooden with his fist. And with that, he just like pulls out this like essentially little wooden tray that he just hands you, and it's just got what look like pretty much. You know, what a modern culture would consider like a hot pocket. How much? <laughs> three pockets, three gold. <laughs> I paid the man. Okay. And so, they're portable, right? Yeah. Yeah. I take uh, them and catch wait, up with everyone. Wait. What? Be careful. On the inside, is very hot. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> I wait uh, two minutes before I consume them. Okay. Um, you get the sense that was the right choice because the inside <laughs> is very hot. But well worked. Very good. Very tasty. Onwards you go. Um, okay. So with that, your group is headed towards where? The uh, Hunter the Guild. The Monster no. people. Yeah. I don't remember where the monster was. Oh, well, the Hunter's Guild first. That's the... Yeah. Is that the place? Uh, no, I, I think that's the place before that. Okay. The Hunter's Guild. I don't remember what it was called. It's a creature yeah. company, isn't it? Company. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creature company. Let's go to the creature company. Yes. I'm just following my group right now. Okay. Uh, we have a... Case of very expensive booze. Um, yep. So with that, um, you head to the Creek Company, and it is much less busy at this time of day. Um, as you step in, you see a few kind of scattered individuals. Um, uh, you do see a kind of large, rotund, uh, again, your second of the day, full-blooded orc that you've seen. Um, and as you enter, sure enough, uh, guild leaders in there, um, the very rough-looking dwarf that you remember seeing previously, as he goes I, through. I, I, I'm sorry, I would have to lead the group in, and I feel immediately stupid that we didn't bring any proof that we killed anything. He told us not to, to be fair. That's true. I would come to the desk <laughs> properly then. Like, um... So we have, uh... We have slayed your beasts. Uh... Ran into a few problems. There was a druid controlling them. These... These chimera. Um... As instructed, we... We killed them. Left them where they were. The druid we tried to bring back with us, but she kind of turned into a cloud of moths of death. Wait, you got there. there. Druid, you say? Yes. Huh. We, 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 I, we thought we had her contained, and she stepped out of it, but we, we killed the beasts, surprisingly enough. Both Chimera are dead. Yes. Both Chimera are dead. I I will say I am... Like, I whisper this. I have a big concern that the Druid escaped. Hey. It's okay. Less words. Job well done. The job was for two Chimeras, not a Druid. The druid will handle. Okay. So, this calls for some okay. celebration. Say, uh, have you guys had breakfast yet? No. No, we have not. I look back at the rest of you. I don't know if you've no. ever had a meat pocket before, but we got our guy here to do meat pockets. I just had three. 
Well, he just had to like We have not anything. We would love a meat pocket. I look at you for approval, everybody. He looks around and says, We are chef here also does vegetarian options. Not my cup of tea, but it's not as good as the original, but we'll get it started. Now, enough of that, let's talk. Um, let's... So, uh, we'll send some of my uh, skinners over there to kind of salvage what they can off the Chimera. Now, if there's any parts of it that you'd like, I can uh, give you a pretty big discount, as long as it's not what the original client needs. I think you know what my company needs, and I'm not speaking of, like, I'm not speaking of the ones that are traveling with me. I'd slide a card of a raven in front of him, like, slide it in front and then pull it back, like, you know They're what company I'm speaking of. Sister, I could see that you're from the Void Wing Sisterhood from miles away. I could tell by your posture. I could hear your footsteps and tell you who you were. You don't get this done as long as me without knowing this kind of shit. That is, that is all okay by me, but this is... This will be my payment to my sisterhood. Pay so them. You don't want to be paid. You want me to just send whatever to the sisterhood. My payment? No. Theirs is separate, but mine I want you to send to my sister. Pretty good. I want gold. Oh, I'll take it. Now, um, did we happen to come across any other items recovered? Because I know a couple merchants that would be very thrilled to see some of their merchandise back. Step back away from the cabin. We found this alcohol, but it seems they had already had two handles before we <laughs> four <laughs> 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 uh, no. There was a there was a box of a, a wonderful instrument that would have been uh, very lovely to have. I've, I've been carrying the instrument box. Um, somebody already got it before us, I guess. Maybe the druid. Maybe she likes a bit of music. Uh, that's uh, that's a shame. Some of Giovanni's people came down earlier. Real ominous folk, but uh, that certainly would have been the uh, of the greatest value. Um, they say that the uh, nobleman who had it made, they say that Giovanni had enchanted the instrument with the soul of his dead mother. That's a weird enchantment. What was the purpose of that? I, I need I to confirm my thoughts for else. <laughs> Hear that, like... <laughs> You can never be too tough to miss your mother. Yes, to enchant her into a knight. Of course, that's terrible. Oh, apparently what Giovanni's folks were saying is that she was apparently a town storyteller from back wherever it is the fuck that they came from. So now she can sing with the instrument you see. Oh, there is a, um, a crate of some linens that are still on top of the mountain, for the most part. It looked like maybe a couple things have been taken. Yeah, I don't really give much of a fuck about the linens. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's gone. <clears throat> Alright, well, uh, I can give you a bonus and certainly some good faith within the guild and some of the other merchants if you part ways with that uh, green bottle reserve. However, if you wanted it for yourself, that would also be fine. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't rat on you. You muted. How much can I get for it? 
Well, without the right contacts, I could tell you this right now that uh, your typical uh, room master would sell some of those to an interested buyer for about 500 a pop. If you try to huck it on the streets, you might get lucky and find someone who's willing to part with, uh, you know, one or two bones for it. But if you give it to me, I could uh, guarantee two. Deal. Very good. Deal. Um, so he opens it up and kind of like uh, clocks the different, um, the rest that are in there. So. So that alone is going to net you 6,400 gold pieces. Oh, holy holy shit. shit! Sorry. Yeah. 5,800. What? Honestly, Hot I did take no care of the, uh, the coin gathered from that. That's all, that's all you guys. Okay. Uh, and with that, he just goes, You've made a certain group of halflings very happy. Not the ones that made it, the ones that bought it. <laughs> so for the five of us, that's uh, 1,360. Holy yeah. shit. We've got a little bit of money now. offer you admittance into our guild with all of the benefits that come with it. We do a lot of monster hunting here. I will join. Do you guys have, like, good connections? People that you can like, set us up with? Do you have, like, a, a pamphlet or a brochure that I can... Once you get to know my friends, you're not going to need to be set up with anyone else. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Perfect. So, with that, you'll get access to our quartermaster, and you'll get a nice little, uh, we call it a, a guild rate for any of the services offered therein. If you ever want a job, you come talk to me, and I'll tell you what I've got. Monster hunting, it's not, uh, it's hard work. It's real fucking hard work. God damn it, if it isn't the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. It's not just about the money either. You're helping people. Making making a difference. You know what I mean? When was the last time you've ever helped someone? You, specifically. And he points at you, Cass. Yeah, I knew, I knew as soon as he said that. Listen, I've helped a lot of people. <laughs> I wasn't life. calling you out just because of some reason. You were just who happened to be who were, was in my eye line there. Uh, uh-huh. Well, you know, a little good Samaritan ship never hurt, but the money's nice. The money is nice. Anyways, speaking of that, we should talk about your payment for the actual job. So let's see here. Our coffers are a little light, but a deal is a deal. We didn't expect you to survive this one. So I can do another uh, 40 bones on top, or I can get you access to something in the arsenal. Uh, what is the arsenal? Uh, I don't know. It's basically just really high tier shit that none of our hunters buy because it's too pricey. Uh, what we've got is this, uh, it's a little, uh, it's a little, uh, Netherese charm. I'll let my quartermaster talk to you about it. Uh, hey, uh, Gibby, get down here, you son of a bitch. Oh my god, Gibby Strange. Um, with that, you watch as, uh, very sheepishly coming in, um, you see a very snappily dressed, tiny little imp uh, that's walking on his feet. Um, uh. As he rolls in, uh, you watch as just following the guildmaster's eye line looks down, and uh, you watch as kind of behind, holding his hands behind his back, you see this 
little imp roll in and just go, uh, greetings. I understand, uh, we've got some new pledges. He goes, no, Gibby, these are full-blown members. He just goes, all right, well, uh, very good. Well, uh, well, you'll certainly have access to my, uh, services. Uh, what is it I can help with, as I've been yelled at from, uh, way down the way? This goes, ah, uh, that thing you had. Uh, my friends here want it instead of coin. They said they were interested in taking it instead of payment for their job. Gold payment, that is. We well, never said those words. We just were interested in what an arsenal was. It's just like you and me were talking about the other day, Gibby, about how sometimes things can't be measured in gold. Well, what's the gold versus, like, what What do you offer, Gibby? What can you give us? Is it worth the gold? Lay it on us. Well, and then you watch as the guildmaster once again talks over him and just says, We were selling it for 8,000 gold. 9,000 even. Right. And it's just hunters don't roll with that. With, the, with them, that, them many bones. What, what does it do? Well, I'll let you talk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> we actually don't exactly know what it is. Um, as far as I can tell, you have to be someone that's bored with a date magical prowess to even use it. But uh, as I've been poking and prodding at the device, it seems to uh, unlock someone's inner potentials and give them mastery over uh, elemental magics. Oh, my feet. That sounds fun. That's very fun. Really no elemental magic. Good. Yeah. Well, why don't you go ahead and just step into my office and just. I, I think it might be better demonstrated. And yeah, he kind of. Uh, oh my God. Walks over and. I'm gonna cast Sanctuary on myself, just because. <laughs> okay, like. Um, as you watch, you see this thing, and, um, you see that, uh, Gibby now begins to fly up on his little imp wings and kind of perches on, like, what, like, a kind of the edge of the table there. And what you see is this beautiful, almost from like a glass platter with like a case over it. What you see is this, um, uh, series of metal rings that are in diamond shapes that are just laid flat against, uh, what looks like a, a little plate that they set it on. In the center of it, you just see this jewel that is like flint, it's faintly glowing, like a greenish color, and then it changes to red, and then light blue, and then dark blue. And he just goes, um, so I have just been referring to it as, uh, well, we found it on a trade manifest of a far empire ship that was uh, brought down by a, a young dragon and um, well it wasn't really going anywhere that anyone would be asking any questions about it but it's pretty obvious even to us that this was of a death or ease bait um, and on the manifest they just called it the dubious apparatus it's pretty straightforward so by a young dragon. Well, the young dragon attacked the ship. Our guys killed the young dragon and then did what you guys all do, which is, you know, I refer to it as murder hoboing, where it basically just means you, like, don't really have a place to stay and you just go around staying at inns, you get into fights and, you know, drink at bars and then you go kill something and then just take everything around and then leave. Basically, and then 
then the guy you see after, who you sell all your shit to that you've taken from people you've killed in far off lands who won't remember your face or your name or anything like that, and then I sell it back to different versions of you who will then use those items to go back out to different lands and peoples who speak different languages and look different than them, so they can kill them to take their stuff, and the cycle goes on. Murder hope, that's what I call it. Sorry, I, I was trying to find I can hear you over that. Anyway, I heard, as a as a character, have I heard of Nazarene's magic? Very much so. Uh, Solinor would talk nothing other than that. Um, in fact, his big I, I don't want to say claim to fame because he's a pretty reclusive individual, but he has revealed to you that he supposedly um, claims to have lived through um, like the age of Nether and all of like the collapse, the fall of Karsus, he claims to have lived through. Um, it does not look like any of his creations per se, but he just goes, uh, uh, Gibby goes on to just uh, go. Um, so, as you can see right now, the device on its own is inert. And he kind of takes the thing off and like touches it and says, uh, you could even do a little abuse. And you watch as he snaps his fingers and there's like a tiny little, it's it's kind of funny seeing this, but with the imp, all his magic is scaled down. So he snaps his finger and there's a tiny little like create bonfire that happens, but it's just like way smaller than any that you've seen. And he just goes, and see uh, the device doesn't really uh, interact with that. So, but, if you will observe, um, I need an assistant for this. Um, there he is. Uh, Chet, would you mind coming down here? And you just see this kind of nervous, young looking uh, human male who just goes, um, Hi. Uh, Chet, uh, will you show our guests uh, that thing that happened? He just goes, Okay. Uh, and he just reaches out. And you watched, like, uh, give himself like interact with this thing and fuck with it cast a spell on it when Chet reaches out uh, You watch as the device stands up on its own and begins spinning on the tip of one of those diamond like shapes and then the different uh, Like metal rings begin almost like orbiting around the center gym and spinning in different directions and different vectors and You watch as now instead of like randomly going between those colors it'll go into like a deep blue. And when it does that, it'll spin in a very specific uh, formation. And then yeah. the watch as, again, it then switches to red. And as that happens, the rings reorganize themselves in a different way. It almost looks like um, it, it, it's hard to explain. It, it looks like there's very specific configurations of this device that do different things. And then Chet pulls his hand away and it, falls inert and like spins on the plate like a coin and then just like falls. This is incredible. That's cool. Sundar is like enchanted by this and wants to touch it. You reach out. Yeah. As you reach out to touch it, the same thing happens that happened to Chet. Oh, hey. Ooh, you got the touch. Um, are you guys okay if we take this instead of money? I really want this thing to yeah, we got a big, I mean, I'm okay with it. We got a big payout. I'm fine with that. I'm receiving no payment I want. My investment is in the group I am standing with, as cheesy as that sounds. <laughs> Money helps. Um, Gibby, we will take the, um... Soul! The dubious apparatus. <laughs> you hear, you hear... The guildmaster rush forward. He just goes, "Sorry, but the plates and shit aren't included." And you watch as he like, <laughs> the and, like takes it off and just goes, "This is actually mine. This is uh, not work related, but I was just using it to make this look nice." Uh, that is yours, and he snatches it. And you notice when he touches it, nothing happens, and he just hands it to you. Same. Put it in my pocket. As, as you're holding it, it's weird because you don't know where to hold this thing. Um, it has 
like, it has nowhere to, like, as you're holding it, it's wanting to move and stuff, and it's like a device that can't move because you're holding it. So it's like, it wants to, like, it, it's, it's very odd. Like, it, you, you almost get the sense that the device isn't working when you're holding it because it can't spin the way that it wants to. And then when I let it go, it does the fun stuff. As you, like, release it in your palm, it begins to levitate. And it just stays there. I'm just gonna play with it. Real fucking yeah. fancy. With it. So as you begin playing with it, you've got this thing that's now like you you notice it, it's it's weird, and in some ways it's got a mind of its own, and in others, um, you can kind of will it to move in a certain way. Um, as part of this, you do get an immediate understanding of what this device does. Um, so this only works for sorcerers, um, as it only reacted to you and Chet, who apparently is a sorcerer. Um, Chet, you are a sorcerer, did you know this? <laughs> um, he looks at you, just looking relieved that that thing is seemingly weak. Um, so, as part of this, um, you gain access to a new cantrip called Sorceress Burst. Um, uh, let me try to remember how this works. But basically, it's an attack. It's a. It's you make a ranged spell attack, um, and you can choose any element that it is. Ooh, it's like chromatic orb, but like. Fucking right. Much better. So it is a. It is a. Dramatic one, it's a 1d8. And for you at level 5, it's a 2d8. Um, however, right. um, on a roll of 7 or 8, you gain exploding dice. Oh, fuck. Now, well, that's a big thing. If you ever come into a situation where the uh, you explode three times, the you will instead create an elemental explosion centered around yourself that you will take damage from, and it will not your intended target. So don't blow up three dice the same number. Awesome! I love that shit. That's fucking fantastic. As soon as, as soon as I see her like touch this thing and it changes, I I kind of interpose myself because at this point in my mind, I think that like this was the object that was worth much more than what they're paying us, and kind of step us back out of the room with my back to Shandara. <laughs> like, I mean, I will say anyone. It doesn't take much to see that. They had a hard time selling this object to anyone, and the guildmaster seemed pretty pleased to be rid of it, and seemed less excited about parting with even more. Ooh, that, that, uh, I so that was... This does automatically take up an attunement slot. Um, this is also considered an arcane charm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, what does that mean? Um, yeah, that means oh, that, that I can... Yep, and the necklace. So yeah, it, I really do like to uh, reduce the attunement burden if you have a, an associated talent. I gotta say, Alex, I really do like how you made the whole necklace thing with the fucking attunement slots. Like, that is an awesome awesome fucking thing. Glad you like, buddy. <laughs> um, so with that... Um, the, uh, you watch as um, Bobby the Gent, a.k.a. the Guildmaster, um, kind of takes uh, Sundara, he kind of like clasps you over the shoulder and he clasps Kaz over on the other shoulder. He's like, all right, gang, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Now, what say we work on generating some good old value for the guild and killing some monsters for us? Yeah, what's, what's next on the docket? 
So we've got an adult red dragon that's causing some problems over by uh, Orofin Town. Um, figure two chimeras, adult red dragon. It's a bit of a step up, but currently don't have anyone else taking on that job. Um, I'm seeing looks of... We're thinking about it. We'll, 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 we'll circle back to that one. Seems a bit much. Circle back, okay. All right, what else we got? Um, let's see. This, oh, another orphan job. Look at this. People going missing. That's not much information. Don't know if it's monster related, but if it is, they'll pay whoever kills whatever causes it. Between you and me. It's not the worst thing if sometimes something bad happens, a monster dies, and then we just, you know, shake our heads, call it good. You know what I mean? You didn't hear that from me. Uh, Do you have anything to do with, like, bandits or something? You know, something simple. <laughs> Bandits, so if, you know, most, and many will say, uh, monstrous creatures or arcane beasts, it's the proper term, uh, are bandits in a way, because they're often attracted to magical items and they uh, feel bandits. Um, but we are not in the business of killing people or bandits. The laws of these companies and stuff, man, that's way... You know, that's that's not our, our place. Um, so we're all about killing monsters. Do you have any less uh, terrifying monsters? You know, come to think of it, the red dragon, in a way, is quite the bandit, if you hear about the issues that they've been having with it. I think bandit would be a great way to put it. It is a red, scaly, giant, fire-breathing bandit that I need you guys to go kill. Uh, guys, I don't. Yeah, I, we're not. We're not doing that, right? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing over for really, really terrifying things about dragons. No, I don't think we're ready for that. That sounds yeah. really impossible. It's also a full-blown adult. Yeah, which, so that doesn't. It's so like, uh, you know. What about goblins? Do you have anything with like little goblins? Goblins. Oh, I can do goblins. We always we, we always got goblin work to be done. <clears throat> uh, I mean, you guys just took on the two chimeras. I thought the goblin work would be a little... But, you know, we're looking to kind of chill out, do a little bit of goblin work. Take an easy weekend. I mean, if the option is goblins or dragons, I think... We gotta hold right. the goblins. <laughs> anyway, why, don't you, why don't you get back to me today? Let me kind of get all my papers together, because I'm just going off the top of my head here. Yeah, we'd have to Usually, try. all the kind of middle jobs are the ones that I have a hard time keeping track of because it was like, oh, that's what I want. But then no one ever wants the red dragon. I've had that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then also goblin work. No one likes doing it. People don't like goblins. I don't know why. How long, have you had the, how long have you had the red dragon one? Well, it's it's been months, but uh. we had the job even before that, too, because it got pulled. And then it was, you know, put back on and pulled again. So, all in all, probably about nine months, but uh, most recently about two. And and your only haste on that is to kill the red dragon. Not, I heard I I've personally heard dragons are sentient and can speak. Oh, this guy over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragons are very sentient, and they can be reasoned. Which means the dragon comes over to your town and says, Hey, I'm going to take all your gold and your shit, and I'm going to eat these people. Reason with that. Yeah. And oh. then they do. So that's oh, why, you know, I... secretly, they hire us to pop in and just say, Hey, we're changing the conditions of the arrangement. Bah! And then fuck up the dragon, and then everyone lives happily ever after. Look now. Not, I'm not trying to negotiate. I'm sorry, I was just, I was just curious. I just, I never faced a dragon. I was, I was and curious just, if they. I'll just say this: if you were to take this job, I'll let you know that Gibby happens to sell arrows of negotiating, specifically with the dragon type. Stupid. <laughs> I think so I can. Personally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on the. I, the dragon. I, I, Back up to it. Uh, we'll come back to it. Say, 
Well, I'm trying to remember the open jobs that I definitely should know and I have written down that I will check on. Um, <clears throat> what I will ask is, what did this druid lady look like? Because that seems to be the She, uh, she had black insectoid eye, crazy eye, ivy vibe tattoos, going to the facial orifices. Uh, I think she had, uh, you know, stones or bones implanted in her head. Uh, a few per side, like six per side or something like that. Have I missed anything, guys? Um, nope, that all that all checks out. Pretty much it. It's, it's like Turns into insects. Pattern forming here. Hey, um, say, Chet, we got another one. Yep, uh, the chimeras. Yep, that was also linked to the druids, too. You know the one. You, you knew right. they might have been druids? You could have... No, I, I had no idea there were any druids involved, but over the last three or so years, we've had a couple uh, run-ins with a certain... I call them a cult, but they're not really religious. They're just like... Uh, they're just like regular people, but scary looking. So we call them cultists. This is just one of the things you do when you're a monster hunter. Um, makes the killing go by easier. Um... But, uh, let's see, what did they call their fucking stupid name? Ah, the, the Cult of Renador. They don't call themselves a cult. I call them a cult. We call them a cult. But they're the Druids of Renador. It's like, uh, Elvish for Ruin, Oblivion, uh, Roots? Also, Roots. Hmm. Something like that. Roots of Oblivion. I think that's what it was. But basically, they're, uh, nihilists who hope to seek out the return to a state where the world was ruled by elemental primordials who uh, you know like you had a volcano made of fire and then over here you've got like a giant made of water and then they crash and they make like a mountain or something and, and that's all there was. There's no humans and no uh, no life otherwise and they want to just bring us back to that sort of uh, prehistory time. Why is it that's a job? Handle them. Yeah, because they're still people, so we don't do people. <laughs> that's not the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, 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 I, I get it. I, you if know, they all wild shaped into spiders, <laughs> then we could oh, handle them, though. Th that's the thing, but it's like you kill the spider, but then a druid pops out, and you're like, ah, it's people. It's bad, bad it's PR. <laughs> it's bad PR. Yeah. Ah, shit, it was yeah, people. It's, it's just sort of dirty oh. business when we're like, hey, kill this dragon, hey, kill this chimera. It's like, there's this guy we don't like. You know, so it's okay. yeah. I mean, you know, there's arguments we made that yeah, we could make more money doing it, but then it's like I don't want to run a nest of well, a yeah, staff. No, and... you have your policy and your you know, you... yeah, it's working now, for I mean, you. Don't change it. Yeah. Now, if people happen to get killed while we're hunting monsters, which is cool, then that's you know that happens. You know what I mean? Like. You can't pull your punches just because the dragon has, like, a damsel in distress there. It's like, this is life or death kind of stuff. But yes, excellent question. We don't deal with uh, killing people. That's that's a different deal. And yeah, maybe we can check them out, too. Yeah, yes. what good is that? Uh, well, I mean, between you and me, I'm sure the Under Tavern has, uh, you know, does that kind of business. But that's not something that we... It's, you know, it's we only do legitimate business here. Yeah, yeah. Just check out this other tab, but you're not for that you know, stuff, but yeah, for a good drink. Yeah, I specifically hear that the uh, the drinks are not that good, despite the name. <laughs> right. But, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, tell you what. If you give me the rest of the day, I'll find my notebook, and I can let you know if I've got any other jobs. You know, we used to have a board around here where we would just post the jobs, but one day, some asshole comes in and just signs up for every single one. So, we took that away, so, you know how it is. Uh, yep. So, uh, anything else I could do you for? You weren't interested in the no dragon and, and no, no, not for the people going missing. Yeah. You know what I just thought of? Those two jobs were in the same place. You, you could, we frown on two first here, but 
you know, if you guys happen to be checking out some people going missing, and then happen to just take out a dragon too, you know, I'd have to pay you for both. I mean, that is very enticing, but again, the dragon part is like the problem. And I, I just poke in here at this point. Feel well with burns. Insane. Well, you, and, don't uh, get burned. you don't get it's burned back by the dragon. It's like... Let's, uh, can we go check out this, uh, under tavern? Are, are you asking me if you... No, 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 no. You're a fucking adult, my guy. You're, you're... No, no, no. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. When you want to kill more monsters, you come on back. I'll be more organized next time you see me. To be honest, I'm not expecting you guys to come back again. Because, uh... <laughs> Whatever this druid or these monsters, the chimeras, they killed much more fearsome hunters than you guys. No offense. But Apparently they weren't. Because we lived and they didn't. Yeah. I didn't participate that particular one. Yeah. Yep, or you got lucky. You know, it happens to the best of us. Not to me, though. <laughs> and he just walked away. What do you guys want to do? Let's go to the under tavern. Yes, the under tavern. I, I know there are many different tasks there. I'm all for that. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, Alara, you would know specifically that. Um, the Gilded Glaive does do business with the Undertapper. Um, the, oh, the, um, I'll make you cut you guys off. I gotta go. I hate to bail right now, but shit. Okay. Uh, you guys know I would heal you for any situation, so that's... <laughs> I can do right now. So my job is to keep okay. you alive, Alex. Hard. Setting, setting right. your spells to auto cast. Yes, exactly. Keep them alive. That's all I got. <laughs> and for the make somebody a barbarian in case of fun. <laughs> like, all right. I will see you guys later, though, man. See ya. Yeah. Right. Bye. So, um, with that, um. You uh, talk to Alara, and Alara would tell you that um, the Gilded Glaive does do business with the Under Tavern every now and then, but um, it would be interesting to open up that route of doing work. Um, well, the stack has a criminal background. You do. You might... No, so I, I might have contacts. People. Yeah, you you might have some criminal criminal contacts. Um, yeah, you could you could look into that. I mean, just so you know, you're essentially attempting to roll up to the largest criminal organization in Carsa. Some people estimate that it's actually by value and by like um, power and people larger in scale than even the Far Empire Trade Company. Um, yeah. And you're trying to roll up to this organization and be like I don't have shit to do. I'd like to steal and kill. Um, so, But you can certainly try. Um, if you think you've got those kinds of skills that would suit you for like assassinations and um, like like heists and things like that, it could be pretty lucrative. But that's essentially the kind of work that they do. I mean, 
it's up to you all. You just need to know what we're getting into. Is it pretty? I mean, we have we exhausted all of our other options. Yeah, we can check in with the building plane. Yeah, we can always wait. Hit a brothel or two. Let's check in. I would no rush. I'll be right back. You'll, if you recall, there were, um, um, there were other jobs mentioned by uh, the proprietor of the uh, Gilded Glaive. Um, he specifically mentioned that. Uh, one of the, um, a bunch of merchants were having some issues all at the same time. Um, so this stuff that was going on with the creature company was happening where a bunch of these hunters were going missing. Um, you had, uh, uh, one of the, uh, firearms shops, uh, they had, uh, goons that were constantly messing with their orders. Um, and then there was a smuggler that has also gone missing. Well, I'm particularly good at finding people and information. Uh, I like that idea. Okay. Um, okay. Also, we're we are all very adept at beating up goons. We don't gotta kill them, so it should be easier. I think honestly, we might be able to do both if they haven't been taken. Do we have to go back to the Gilded Glaive, or like, do we know? <coughs> oh Jesus Christ! <coughs> um, do we know where they are? You don't have any leads on how to get involved with investigating the disappearance of the smuggler. Um, but you do know that the... You know the name of the proprietor and the name of the shop um, that uh, we're dealing with, like, break-ins and, like, harassing customers and things like that. Um, So that was, um, the name for that was, uh, Reggie Donovan. That was the Reggie name Donovan. of it. Reggie Donovan. That was the name of the, um, the proprietor of the firearms store. Um, and the name of the store was the Huntsman's Promise. We can go to, um, yeah, we can go to that store, I guess. Okay. Let's see if that's uh, still an issue. Okay. Um, so, with that, you make your way down towards the uh, Huntsman's Promise. Um, I'm thinking, you guys, we got James is AFK right now. Actually, I gotta head out to you, Alex. Ducking in and out, so I think we might actually call this session early. I think this would be a good place to stop, too. Okay. Start off with the next so, two missions. Yeah, and then we'll pick up when we've got kind of some more people. 